Hello everyone, I wanted to make a video about mods today. I've had a lot of requests for videos about mods. So I'm going to start by talking about which mods I think are helpful or useful in the game, or mods that I've used and why, and then I'm going to talk about my opinion on mods and gaming in general. Alright, so without further ado, these are mods either I've used or I think that are helpful for people, and I'll, I'll talk about why and show them out. But as a note, I don't use all of these mods, and that is something that I'll talk about later. So this is one mod that I absolutely use, and I encourage every single person to use. It's more save slots. If we go out and actually look at the game, you only have five save slots. And now I am making a lot of different videos where I'm playing different worlds, but even in general, you should want to try out a lot of different characters in different worlds. I think playing with different characters is extremely fun. So being limited to five save slots is kind of lame, especially if you're playing on PC, where it's very, very easy to save uh, more characters. What you'd have to do is you'd have to like move your save file out constantly so you have your other save files. But what this mod does is it simply allows you to have more save slots, which is absolutely 100% useful. Um, it doesn't affect gameplay whatsoever, and it just allows you to have a, a bunch of save slots. More than you would probably need. And if you really want to, you could still switch your save file up with this. So I absolutely recommend everyone gets that. That's like one of the best mods because it doesn't really affect gameplay, literally just an upgrade to the game, allowing you to have more save, save files. Alright, so we have a couple other mods. Um, I'm going to talk about minimaps and um, a couple other mods together. So, minimap, I have two of them here. This one's not shipwrecked compatible because it wasn't updated, so I stopped using that. Um, but this one's actually really good and it's been updated a lot. So, we have the minimap HUD. Now, the minimap is extremely useful. Uh, especially when you're making videos like me, but in general, it's actually really useful. So, let's hop into a world here. Alright, so as we can see, we have this nice little mini-map up in the corner, um, which is great, especially for me when I'm making videos. Because the alternative for this is um, constantly pressing tab to check the mini-map, and you have to constantly press it. I mean, I know where stuff is on this island, I go to my berries over here and stuff like that. Um, but I like to explore everything, and I like to, when I'm going at sea, not leave blobs, so I like to constantly know that I'm not like leaving little slivers. Um, in most worlds, depending on where I'm going, I'm eventually going to fully explore the world. And it's also helpful to, like, I'm heading back to my base, and I don't know exactly what angle to walk at, and I don't want to walk past my base. Um, so it does aid a little bit in gameplay. There's a couple ways you can use it that are kind of cheap. Um, and when you are exploring in the dark, you can actually see more with your explored ring than you can. So you can actually, like, see, oh, there's a grass top over there, even though you can't see it on your screen. Um, as a note, you could you could open your minimap constantly to check that. And if you watch my um, Ancient Guardian Rush, I'm not using a minimap, so I can play the vanilla game and I actually um, demonstrate that, that I'm constantly pressing tab, which actually costs time. So if you were using a minimap during that run, you'd be saving time, which is kind of cheating, I guess. But it's really helpful. I find it to be just a direct upgrade to the game um, because... Like, I realize the aesthetic of the game not having a minimap is important, and it looks good in the HUD, and this kind of is a little jarring. But they did a pretty good job at making it look good. And since you have a map anyway, and you could do this, like, this isn't affecting gameplay much at all because time doesn't pass while you're tabbed. Um, it's really useful. It's a little bit more unfair if you use it Don't Starve Together for, for the reason that... Um, and don't starve together, it doesn't actually pause, so you are saving time by having a minimap. But you're not really saving time here. So minimap mod, really good. I recommend using it. It's pretty much a direct upgrade to the, the HUD of the game, but it can be seen as a little unfair. Alright, now that we have um, the minimap, the more save slots, another one I use all the time is um, wormhole marks. I don't constantly have this on because it's not really that big a deal, but it's definitely very nice. What it's going to do is it's going to mark wormholes with the color so that when you've used them, you'll know where they go to. It won't mark it with the color before you've jumped in them when you find them, so you can't use it to discover where wormholes go without using it, which would be unfair. But what it does is it'll mark them with the color after you use them, so that you know that wormhole is that path. And this is great because this is something you can easily keep track of yourself. However, I've played many, many different worlds. So it's actually very difficult sometimes for me to remember which wormholes go where. Alright, so as you can see, we have wormholes right here. They're no color. 
I haven't played this world in a while. I really don't know where these wormhole goes. I think this one might go down there, actually. But I'm not sure, because I've played this world a lot, for about 400 days. But I haven't played it in, like, months. So that's why it's really helpful for me when I'm playing a bunch of different worlds. Um, and this isn't a necessity for a mod, but it's actually really good, really helpful for me. I have a hard time remembering stuff, so I'll do this. And it's not marked yet because I haven't jumped in it. I've had the mod disabled, but now that I have, we have this nice blue marking. Um, so I can jump back in the world, load it up again, and be like, oh, this worm goes there, this goes there. I, yeah, I remember that. Okay. Um, and it's not going to cheat and like reveal another wormhole or do anything like that. So it's really kind of just um, a thing to help you with your memory, which is good for me when I'm playing so many different worlds. For you, it might not be a necessity. All right, now that we're done with those mods, this is one mod I use conditionally. And I'll talk a little bit about why I use it conditionally. But it's Geometric Placement. Geometric Placement's actually really great. Um, it has a ton of options, so you can kind of fine-tune it to do a lot of what you want. There's a lot of things it can do that are really cool, like it can show you like when things will catch on fire next to things and stuff like that. Um, but I have it on Control Turns On mod, and I usually have it on. So let's hop in a world, and I can talk a little bit more about it in there. Alright, so as you can see, we got this like mess of grass and twigs over here. Um, no geometric placement used, these chests kind of far apart, stuff like that. Now, with geometric placement, what it allows you to do, if I can get my frames back, oh man, is this, there's no grid right here, there's a grid with the, the tiles when you dig them up, but there's really no grid. So geometric placement will bring up this grid that will show you that you can place stuff, so you can place stuff perfectly. Um, the right amount of space in between each so that you fit as much grass as possible in a small area. And it also looks nicer. Now, what that does is it allows you to make your base look neater, um, which is really big for me because I, I think it looks really cool and neat. But it also allows you to like kind of know what you can do and like get stuff really close. So like, how close can I get this to my crockpot set up right here? Um, and it doesn't do any cheats. It doesn't make it so you can place, place things any closer together. Uh, and it doesn't make it so... Like, if I were to destroy this crockpot, I wouldn't actually be able to place it again because it's too close to the ice box. But I can place the ice box in between these two crockpots. Uh, so it doesn't fix that, which is good because it doesn't give you an advantage. But it does make your base look a little nicer. And when you're actually placing stuff, you want to place it close together so that um, you can keep your base compact. So it does save you time because you can just boop, 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 boop. And as you can see, these aren't neat. So this one right here, I actually wouldn't be able to place it because um, it's too close to this one because it's a little lower. Um... So this is a really good mod. I use this a good amount. Um, but I don't actually use it when I'm making videos. And I'll explain real quick. Um, I like this mod and I like using it. But when I use a mod like this in my videos, it's something that not everyone can use. Not everyone can mod. Not everyone knows how to mod. Some people are, are going on systems that they might have not have the same mods as PC. So if I use something like this, it only makes my videos less accessible to those people. So I wouldn't use that, and then I would get a ton of comments from people watching it who are like, oh, how do I get that mod? How do I get that? What do I do? Um, so if they want to watch this video, video and get that mod, then that's great. But if they're just watching my normal videos, I wouldn't want them to be like, well, I can't do that. Well, I can't do this. Well, why is he talking about these strategies I can't do? So that's why I don't use that mod in my videos. Um, and I made this in a stream, so I didn't use the mod. But some of my other worlds, I do use that mod. Um, so I kind of always have it active, but I have it on control to place, which means that um, when I press control, it comes up. So as you can see, I could place this campfires here. But normally, right, I'd have to like sit here like, okay. And then there's like this little bit of room right there. But now it's it's exactly where you could place it. So the control to place is also good because I'd be like, I want to right here, more over here, right? And I don't want it on this grid. So you can do that. You can place things a little closer together without it. Um, but there's all kinds of options to configure that however you want. So it's a really great mod. All right, next we got combined status. Um, this is going to display health, hunger, sanity, temperature, moon phase, world day, stuff like that. It's very configurable, so you can you can hide stuff like world temp. Um, you can take off stuff like waning, moon stuff. You can take that stuff off if you don't want. You can change your HUD size, stuff like that. You can show your naughtiness, stuff like that. Um, now, something like this mod, 
we're getting into the area of these are actually stats that you're not supposed to know when you play the game. So this is a little bit unfair. Um, it's giving you an advantage, giving you information that you might not otherwise have that you could just keep track of. So you could say, you know, that's stuff I can keep track of myself. I know what day it is, what season it is. Um, so it's not really making it unfair. It's just making it a little bit less tedious to figure out this information myself. I don't have to constantly remember stuff. And I do get that because when I jump into a world, you'd have to figure out what day it is, what season it should be. Um, if it's not like winter and you can obviously tell or summer, you're like, what day of spring is it? So it's it's helpful for that when um you don't know what day you're on in a world. You haven't played it in a while. Let's hop into a world and check it out. All right, so as you can see, we got just way more statuses, and they're kind of condensed. Um, and it'll, like, show some stuff always on as so you don't have to hover over, and you have, like, max and stuff like that. It's actually really helpful. We have 90 nest points right here. I just killed a couple butterflies, and we got our temperature. Um, so it's showing a lot of stuff, and we have the moon phase right there. Instead of just knowing when it's the full moon, we have all the moon phases. So we're going to know it's the full moon tonight, even though the full moon's not up. Normally, we'd have to wait for that to come up. So... We, can, we know we're in mild season. We have nine days left. So I don't use this. I think it's a little bit unfair. Um, it's giving you a little bit of an advantage. Obviously, you know all these things that you probably wouldn't have to know that you maybe have to keep track of. But there's plenty of other games I play that give you access to information that you have to keep track of. When I play Payday, I use Hawkside instead of having to count out every ECM because they last 30 seconds. Um, you'd have to count to know when to play the next one. Or you, if you download Hawkside, it would just give you a timer. So things like that, I find that helpful. Um, it's adding game information, and if you want to use this mod, I mean, you shouldn't feel like you're cheating or anything. It's really not giving you anything you can't figure out with the game. I mean, like, you can just know what temperature you're at. Um, just by, like, kind of knowing how long you've been out or what season it is. Nineness points, you can just count your nineness points. Um, and it's not really going to help you much knowing your nineness points, because you still have to kill more guys. So what you do is, when you're trying to farm Krampus, you just kill until he spawns, and if you're not trying to get him... The hisses tell you that you're getting too close and you stop. So, same with the seasons. You can actually just, if you haven't messed with the seasons at all, you could just look at the day, look at a big chart, and it'll tell you what season you're on, how many days left, right? So, that's not giving you any information. And then these, you could just hover over these and you can just know your max. So, it's not giving you access to a lot of stuff that you couldn't figure out. The moon cycle is the same thing. So it's, I think it's a really good mod. They did a really good job with it. I would use it. I just don't. I like to play in vanilla. That's kind of like what I'm towards. And also in my videos, I don't want people to be like, oh, well, I don't have this. How do I have this? Why do you have this? A lot of people actually say that about the mini map, which is just about the only mod I use in my videos. And I use that in my videos because I don't want to be pausing constantly because I think it's just going to extend the length of my videos unnecessarily and it's going to make it more boring. So I have the mini map in my videos. So. And I constantly have people asking me how to get a mini map, so. Alright, next we got uh, display food values right here. All right? So this mod doesn't have a lot, it's just got like that, minimal mode, stuff like that. Um, so there's not a lot of configurable options, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna display the hunger, health, and sanity, expiration date, and stuff like that of food. Now, this is getting into the area of, this is stuff um, that is kind of very helpful for you, um, kind of neuters the game a little, makes it a little easier, um, and that's what a lot of people will look down on, on mods, and I'm going to talk about that after, but I think this is a great learning mod. I think it's a great mod to have when you're new, um, because otherwise, the other way you do it is you just look everything up on the wiki, forget it, look it up on the wiki, forget it, look it up on the wiki, and that's just a waste of time for you. Um, to be constantly doing. So we're going to hop in a world here and check it out. Alright. So, as you can see now, we have a hunger value under our thing. Minus 10 sanity hunger, minus 10 sanity hunger. Stuff like that. So, we can go look through our icebox and we can see what everything is. Now, this could be considered a little cheating, right? Because we know, you know... We don't have to look this up. This isn't information that's available to us when we play the game normally. Okay, now, oh, wow, yeah, meatballs. Okay. But you can also just go look this up on the wiki. That's how you can get it normally. So, is it really cheating if it's something you could just look up on the wiki? I don't really think it's cheating if you could just look it up on the wiki. And I think as long as you're using this mod as kind of like a learning mod, I think it's a really good thing. I think what you should do... And I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just saying if you want to learn to play Don't Starve and you really want to put the time into it um, to get good, 
use something like a mod like this and like no oh yeah yeah you see this constantly and eventually you won't have to use it anymore because you'll remember because you've been seeing the values constantly um, like I kind of know 62.5 for meatballs or 40 for this um, for health and stuff like that or I know like a butterfly's eight or like the honey is three health but it's about like 10 hunger and you know stuff like that like the ice is really low but it gives you a little health you know like roasted the cooked berries are gonna give you a little bit of health um, but you'll just know the exact values. Like, I don't know the exact values because I'm not constantly looking up in the way, but now you know, like, one health. Wow, 12.5 hunger. Wow, it's more hunger when I cook it. Maybe I should cook it now. Um, maybe I should um, eat these raw. Maybe I should cook this because the 10, the 10 sanity loss. Um, and as long as you use it for a learning opportunity, I don't see the point of not doing it. I don't see the point of not putting a mod like this when you're new, um, if you can, as long as you're not going to be like, uh, what's the hunger for this again? Oh, what's this? Oh, what this? What is this? Like, try and use it to learn how to play the game better. And then it's, um, going to be really helpful for you. Alright, finally, we got, a uh, Smart Crockpot. Now, what this does, as you can see, um, there's really no, um, options for this. Is it's going to tell you what you're making when you put stuff in the Crockpot. Now, this is another thing that's kind of on the line of, like, you know, cheating, unfair, or whatever. Um, because that's not information you have access to, but once again, you can go on the wiki and you can look all of this up. Or you can enable this and just have it in-game, so you're not really wasting time. So, that's really good if you're new, because you don't want to just be constantly surfing the wiki. If you don't have two screens like me, uh, it's a lot of wasted time. So I think it's a really good thing to be able to go in the game and just look at that. So let's, let's go in and look at that real quick. Okay, so now we're in game. Um, we can see that we have a bunch of stuff in here. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's let's look. So we still have our food value items on because we still have that mod on. And now we're um, getting a lot of uh, lag because we have so many mods on. Right. All right. So we can cook or we can predict. Now, we don't have to use it. And this is really great, a really great feature, because I'm not going to predict this because I know what it makes. It makes banana pops. But I can look on here, and I can see banana pops, and you can see the odds. So what you can do is you can use this to learn the priority system, too, which can be complicated. Sometimes it's hard to remember. You can learn that. You can say, like, what's the chance this is going to make, you know, monster lasagna? Because, you know what I mean? It, it could make meaty stew, stuff like that. You know that this is going to 100% make monster lasagna. But some shipwreck recipes have a priority where you can actually make other stuff. Um, and I don't know one off the top of my head that would actually use two monster meat. I think if you get enough fish value in there, um, you could also make surf and turf. Let's, let's put this in here. Yeah, so I think that's really good. I think that's good for new players. I think that having to... Uh, and I don't shift click because I'm using one hand. So don't crucify me in the comments for that. In one of my earlier Let's Play series, I um, hadn't played for a very, very long time. And I didn't actually know what um, Butterfly Cupcakes was besides having two sticks and butterflies. I didn't know if it was berries or fruit or vegetables. So I did a, this a lot, this wet goop. Whereas I would need a vegetable in here, which I don't have any on me right now. Um, so, if I had this, this would be helpful. Once again, I don't, I'm not going to use mods while I'm um, doing my videos because people will be like, oh, how do you predict? But this isn't really, this isn't giving you an advantage. This is telling you something that you could just look up. You could say, oh, that's taffy. Okay. Um, is this taffy? Oh, wow, that is taffy. Okay. Is this, is this taffy? And you can learn about the game. You can learn the recipes. You can remember them in the game. Um, and the thing about this is, there's something to be said about playing a game blind um, nowadays that I really like. And I don't want to talk much right now about this because I'm going to go into my opinion after I'm done talking about mods. So the people who don't want to see that don't have to. But playing a game blind, not knowing these things, is interesting. When I first played Don't Starve, I never looked anything up for like, the first three worlds. I didn't look a single thing up. I had to figure out that you could die in the dark, figure out all this stuff, figure out the Hounds game. I explored a sinkhole my first time without having anyone help me, and it was great, and it was fun. But then there's things in games that are kind of just really tedious. Do you really want to go yourself and learn what every crockpot recipe is by making wet goop 900 times? Or do you think as a community, 
you discover a recipe and you post it online. That's kind of the way to go nowadays when we have stuff like this. Because the game doesn't walk you through it. It doesn't give you any idea. And it's not something that you can figure out. It's not like, oh yeah, banana pops. Obviously, ice sticks in bananas. Like, you don't even know banana pops are a recipe unless you've looked it up. So how are you supposed to know what to put in a crock pot? So, with that being said, you have to go on the wiki and look up the crockpot recipes if you want to use the crockpot. And the crockpot's an integral part of the game. It's one of the most important parts of the game. And if you don't want to look on the wiki constantly, or you don't want to go do that, having this mod allows you to enjoy the game. If you're just a casual person coming in, you're not going to go memorize everything on the wiki. And this is giving you a way t to have stuff. And now you know, oh, this is great for sanity. This is great for hunger, stuff like that. Um, I can make banana pops. And you learn about the game. And then eventually one day you disable these mods because you don't need them. Or you stop clicking on predict because you just know. Um, or you don't even look at the hunger value. You just eat the roasted berries because you know what it gives you. So let's go back and let's summarize all this. Now that we're back, this is what my mod page normally looks like. We have geometric placement right here, um, which I have on control only, so I don't actually use it. But it is enabled in a lot of my videos. I just don't ever press control when I'm holding stuff. Um, we have the mini map HUD, which I use in my videos, and I have more save slots. These things I don't really use. I'm not going to use that a lot because it's my videos, but when I'm playing by myself, I'll go and enable it, but sometimes I don't. And this is um, a total conversion mod that Kali made um, that's just kind of uh, here. And this is com completely different. If you want, you can try that out. It comes with the game, so if you're on PC. And then I don't have these enabled. I kind of have them um, in here, so I can talk about them, but I don't really use them. Um, and they could be helpful. Now let's look over here real quick. Let's look. We have wormhole marks. We have um, that. We have where's my beefalo. That's going to tell you where beefalo are in the world after you've discovered them. That can be really helpful. Uh, we have extra equip slot. Shipwrecked. Now what that's going to do is add an extra equip slot so you can equip more stuff. Now we're really getting in the area of mods that are just going to help you play. They're just going to make you better. It's just going to give you stuff that you couldn't have before. And I want to talk about like why that can be a bad thing, why that can be a good thing. But let's hop in a game so you're not bored with me on the screen. Okay, so now let's talk about this for a little bit. So we have mods, as you saw, extra equipment slot. We have mods, you know, geometric placement. We have all kinds of mods that do different stuff. You could do anything with a mod. So what that means is the natural balance of the game, which Cly worked very hard on, can be upset by mods. It can be easier, it can be harder. And depending on what you want, that can be good for you. But let's go over a couple things right now. First, there's a lot of toxicity in the community about mods, about stuff like that. In every, every gaming community, there's people who frown upon people who use mods and stuff like that. Now, let me preface this by saying I've been playing games for 20 years. Probably even a little longer, maybe. Um, since I was very, very, very young, I've been playing games. I've been playing games my entire life. So, I'm pretty good at games. I'm very good. I know what I'm doing. I don't really mess things up. I pick games up a lot. When I was doing my Let's Play series, that was like my fifth world. Um, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but like I just picked the game up and I have no problem doing anything. The strategy of like where to do stuff. I never watched videos on Don't Starve on how to, how to do these things. I looked information up that I needed on the wiki, like what's the food value for this? What's that? Um, how do I place that? What, like, what does this give me? Like, what glitches are here? I never, like, looked up videos like how to set your base up. I just did all this. This is stuff I figured out myself or learned. And it became my style. So, having that said, if Don't Starve is the first game you're playing, you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be as good at me as Don't Starve. And it's not a bad thing. Everyone has to start somewhere. So, with mods, we have a lot of people in the community. Reddit, Wiki, you know, forums, YouTube, Twitch... Um, that I'll go around and someone will say, hey, um, what do I bring to my next world, you know? Um, I have all this, this is a screenshot of my inventory, and they'll go, you're using combined status and extra inventory slots, why don't you just learn to play the game? And stuff like that is an answer. Like, that's an answer to that question. It's not an answer to that question. They were just asking you for help. Um, I think it's really bad for the community, it's really bad for you, and you seem really immature when you answer questions that way, or when you have this elitist attitude of the, the way I play the game is right. Now, this is a video game. It's a single-player game. I'm not playing against anyone else. I'm not ruining anyone's fun. I'm not going in and griefing. I'm not getting an unfair advantage by using these mods. So, if these mods make the game funner for me, use them. If a mod makes the game funner for you, use that mod. If someone tells you that makes the game way too easy, don't use it. 
play the game however you want. Play the game with the mods you want. If you find it frustrating to keep track of the seasons, get the get the combined status. If you find it frustrating to constantly open your map like I do, get the mini map. If you find it frustrating to remember where the wormhole marks are, get that mod. If you're I don't want to look on the wiki, this game it's too much. I can't remember. Like, what is taffy? What is banana? How do I make this? Get those mods. Um, mod your game to make it kind of how it works for you. And, yeah, it will upset the balance a little. It'll make it easier, and I'm going to talk about that. But it's going to make the game more accessible to you. It's going to make it more fun to you. Then do it. Because if you're not having fun in this game, you're not having fun, then why are you playing? What is this game for you besides fun? Sure, someone makes money off YouTube. I'm, I'm, people make their living off stuff like that. Being good at a game can be really good because people want to hear what you say. But it's a game. It's about fun. And that's really what games were invented for is entertainment. Um, and people watch, get entertainment from people playing games, um, like watching me play games, stuff like that. But you should be having fun if you're playing a game yourself. Um, and that's what it's really about. And I don't think it's good for anyone when people are telling you how to play your game and how to do this. Um, if you want to give someone help or give them tips, that's great, and I love that. And that's why I have all these videos that are kind of tutorials or showing people how to do stuff, and I really love doing that. Or if you want to make a video on characters and what characters are better and talk about like values and your opinions and what makes a character good, that's great too. But don't you know, tell someone, like, the way they play isn't fun or isn't the right way to play. Um, because you can play suboptimally and still have fun, and that's fine. Some people really find it fun to get really good at a game, like I do, and to really, like, push a game to its limits. A lot of people do, and they should do that. They should have fun being optimal about the game, learning about the game. Some people want to pick up Don't Starve, play a couple worlds, play for 20 hours, and be done with it. Those people probably would want something like the crockpot and the hunger values and stuff like that geometric placement where they don't have to learn all these things to enjoy the game for 20 hours before they you know move on to a next game or eventually come back so it's it's allowing them to access the game in a way that's fun for them and you should never tell anyone that the way they're having fun isn't right all right now my opinion i'm obviously not using a lot of mods right now um so I don't think mods are fun for me, and let me explain why, because this might apply to you and you might not even realize it. So what mods do in a game like this, like I said, is they can make it easier. Um, and I'm kind of talking about some of the mods, not a lot of the mods that I did, um, because those mods are uh, very low impact on the game, and that's why they were the mods I want to talk about, because they're very low impact, they're not going to change the game much, so they're pretty accessible to everyone, everyone can use them, it's not going like, to change the game. Now, there's a lot of mods that, like, 99 stack size. There's mods um, that'll, like, give you extra inventory slots, like I showed you. And they're really popular. You have, like, four inventory slots. You can wear, like, a backpack, armor, and an amulet, and a hat, and this, and an axe with a spear. And, or, like, your 99 stack size, you could just carry everything in your inventory, basically. You don't have to have like, chests and stuff. <laughs> you carry, like, 99 stack of wood, 99 stack of butterfly wings. And then there's mods that have different characters um, that either they try to balance really well and actually turn out pretty good or are just horribly balanced and like so broken. Um, so that makes the game kind of not fun for me because it upsets the balance and makes the game easier. Now, there's a lot of people who'll jump into a game like Don't Starve that doesn't hold your hand, there's no tutorial, it's, it doesn't tell you to bring a torch at night and if you're not looking stuff up in the wiki or watching someone play before you play, um, it's frustrating and you die a lot. Um, like Sunless Sea, Darkest Dungeon, a lot of the games I've been playing lately, Dead by Daylight, have no tutorial, and they're just, they're going to throw you into the meat of things, and you've got to figure stuff out. Now, that's really how I like to play. Um, I like to play like that. I like to not look up information at first, and because I find the discovery of learning how to play, finding your play style, I find that fun. And I find games that you suck at, and you're like, how can I even beat this? This is impossible. And then... A week later, you're destroying everything. You're like a god at the game. I find that to be more fun than to be like, I can't beat this, so I'm going to put it on easy and beat it. And I think a lot of people would think that, too, if they gave it a try. I think a lot of people might be, like, frustrated at first that you can't wear an amulet and a backpack, and you have to switch up between an armor and backpack, and they're like, I, this is dumb. Why can't I wear an armor and a backpack? The backpack's on my back. And so they just do the mod, or ah, I'm so sick of having to put stuff in the chest, and they do the mod, and that's great. Um, and if you really want to do that, go for it. But I think you should give 
playing the game in its default difficulty a chance because the developers worked really hard to make this what it is and there's a lot of intricities in the game of what do I carry when I go on this trip do I carry my base goods well, like am I am I past that do I have a lantern can I not carry these can I not have a can I store maybe a campfire to clear inventory space store this that's great can I um what about that I'm gonna have to wear armor but I want to wear my hat um I don't want to wear out my hat right now, though, so I have to wear this. I want a backpack for more space, but what if I get in a fight? I have to carry some armor in my backpack so I can swap it out. Stuff like that makes the game really interesting to me, really fun. Um, look at Darkest Dungeon, same thing. You can mod Darkest Dungeon to make it easier, or you could have a fun time playing the game um, on its default difficulty. So I think it's really great to like kind of have that in the game, where you can really get into the diff difficulty of the game and learn it to play. Not everyone's going to be like that. Some people will play a game, like I said, 20 hours, and they'll be done with it. They don't want, they don't have the time to learn the game to the same level, and maybe they work, you know, 60 hours a week, and they don't have time to play a lot of games, and they just want to enjoy their game how they want to enjoy it. So you shouldn't ever tell anyone uh, that they're not playing the game right. So my final message, have fun with your games. Um, always be positive about it. Don't go on message boards tell people they don't know how to play. Don't go argue. Healthy debate about what a if a character is good or bad is great. Um, when it gets into name calling and you don't play the game right, you don't know how to play, that's that's when it's really taking a turn and when you should really sit down and think about like, maybe I should stop because I'm just taking away from everyone else's fun. I'm just making the game more stressful. I'm just making the community more you know toxic, more difficult to be in. And when I look at a lot of the communities for Don't Star, sometimes I feel like people are saying stuff like, oh, well, you should know this. Oh, well, this is easy. Well, that's easy. Well, it's not easy for everyone. Everyone comes in at a different level. Everyone's going to have a different way to enjoy stuff. Everyone's going to, you know, do different things. Everyone's going to be slightly different. I don't use control click a lot when I play for some reason because I kind of never picked it up. I could use it. When I look at my gameplay, I'm always trying to get better. I might like, oh yeah, so I should change that. I should shift click stuff. But it's actually, it's my right shift, which is awkward for me to click because I'm on the WSD key. So maybe I should make it my left shift. Maybe I should make it my Z key. Maybe I should do this. So I will I will always try to learn the game to a point where I'm um, getting better. But not everyone will do that. And you have to accept that everyone is at a different level. Um, everyone's a different person. And we're all gamers. And we all want to have fun. And we're all doing this to have fun. So stop trying to take away from other people's fun. And start having more fun yourself. Alright, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope the mod part was helpful. I hope anyone got something out of the opinion piece, maybe. And, you know, leave a comment if you want to discuss it or you want to berate me for the things I said, which typically happens in YouTube comments, but I could take it. Alright. You guys have a great week. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment, or check out some of my other videos. I hope you have a great day.